Folks, I want to run an idea by Mr. Taylor from Life Goal Investments that I think is very important to the market that not a lot of people caught. But before we do that, let's talk to him. How you doing, buddy? Doing great. I'm excited for this because you're going to kind of sideswipe me. I'm not sure what's coming here. Let's do this. <laughs> this, you is your, this is what you do. This is what you do. <laughs> I, I have fun. Hopefully you have fun as well. Uh, and the audience likes it. So I sensed last week, uh, kind of Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, that the Fed has changed their tune. I believe the Fed for a long time, and I've been very vocal about this, was trying to be the big bad wolf. They were trying to scare the market. They were they were actively being the big bad wolf, trying to blow down the straw house and the brick house, yep. whatever it is, right? The, yep. I think the wolf has uh, taken a break, sitting on a, a lawn chair, you know, you know, drinking a lemonade. I think they're done talking tough. Okay. Is I this a the, function of what the market has done for them? Yes, exactly. Okay. All I, right. I, 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 I had to get where you're going. Yeah. So I think at the end of the day, the Fed's like, ooh, we need to stop trying to knock the market off because the market is, the market's done. I think it did like 41 basis points between Fed meetings. Yeah. Which hadn't happened in the last kind of several. Hence, they were being the big bad wolf. Now and, they're like, and, and ooh. Just for context, for context, Michael's referencing the 10 year treasury yield going upwards. And right. then, you know, obviously yields and bond prices have an inverse effect. So yields went up, bond prices came down again. Significantly, right? Correct. And this is the it, first time so right now on a, on a three-year number right now, bonds are negative. The bond index is negative right now on a three-year number. This is, this is safe money, right? It's yeah, never safe. happened on a two-year number, but we're on three years at this point. Yeah. I don't like your chances of not being negative for three years. You, you got a couple months left, but it's going to be negative, I think. But Brutal. This is what I think the, the Fed saw. And then they got all this other data, which again, we always like to talk about. They're looking in the rearview mirror and they're acting yep. on old data. They got lots of data points looking into the future. And I think they're looking at this going, we need to stop this because we yep. really could, we could really knock this market off. So the pivot that I saw or sensed is it's no longer how high it's now how long. And I think that is a vastly different conversation. So that's what I think happened last week. Wanted to get your input. Yeah, I think that you could be right there. The market is anticipating no more rate hikes. I think there is a chance there is one that comes. And the outstanding curveball that's coming is what's playing out in the Middle East right now. Because what that can do to oil prices is astronomical, depending on how things play out. Hopefully things settle in and peace talks and, and things like that. But um, depending on the involvement of outside nations, that is where we get our oil from largely as a world in general is that you know Middle Eastern suite where beneath the ground there is very readily accessible oil. If that's not there to the extent that it is right now, and they see further sanctions placed on countries because of what they're doing from a political standpoint, that is not good. And guess what? They don't want to do that because guess who wants to get reelected re -elected next year? Joe Biden. And gas prices are hugely, hugely important to consumers in the way they vote. No, there's no question. It's, it's, I, I forget which election it was. It was, you know, there was a quote, it's the economy, stupid. It's always yeah. the economy. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. <laughs> yeah. So, but the reason I think this is important, at least from where I stand, is once we get to this kind of belief in the market, and it's specifically banks, because again, I'm a housing guy, right? Sure. And we've talked about Ignazium, about the really fat difference between yep. rates and yep. the 10 year, right? 300 basis point rounding for ease. I think once the banks realize they're done and they're holding, that is when we start to see competition lower that. And uh, if I'm right, we could see that, you know, Q1 banks going, okay, we don't need 300 basis point Delta. We'll take 290. Yeah. And just for, for further context as to what you're getting at there for the viewers, he's talking about the fact that the 10 year treasury rate is at call it 475 right now. And right now you have the 30 year mortgage at about seven and a half, seven and three quarters. So there's 300 right. basis points, 3% of spread between those two. Historically, that's not normal. Mortgages are priced off of the 10 year treasury and they're usually at about a buck 50. So one and a half percent. So there is that spread compression. The reason the spread is so wide, which is what Michael's alluding to there, is there's a lot of uncertainty as to where interest rates go in the future. 
and banks and, and lenders aren't willing to take that uncertainty out of their book. So they pass it along the consumers at the end of the day, which has markedly slowed down the transaction volume as you've spoken at, you know, at length, obviously. But yo, you're, you're hundred percent right. If you get some normalization and some realization that, okay, rates aren't going higher any further, um, so on and so forth, you can get that spread compression. And then to boot, you could also get some 10 year treasury starting to recede from a yield perspective. And then you get a double whammy of positives on mortgage rates. Yeah. I think, I think we're 90 days away from that scenario playing out. I think the market needs to see that the fed is done. I think they're going to wait for November 1st and December, whatever it is, 15th, 16th, whatever it is. Yeah. But I think they're done. I think I've said that for a while. And then the question becomes how long, I think that is the debate at this point is how long. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so let me ask you this. And this is obviously, <laughs> get out your best crystal ball for this one. But yeah. uh, a, a year out from now, you know, sure. what's your thoughts on kind of like the average 30 year mortgage? Is it, is it so, 6%? Is it, you know, where, where it's are got you a, it's, It has a six on it. Got it. it. Okay. It's got a six on it. I, I don't think it has a five. I think that's wishful thinking. And um, so with yeah. that, is it all recency bias of saying, Hey, things were at close to 8%. Now they're at six and a quarter, whatever the number is. Are we good? Does the market start firing again and transactions start to pick back up in a meaningful way? No, because unfortunately you need inventory. Fair. Right. Fair. You can't have transactions without inventory. Uh, the, the real so so no. And 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 so the inventory is still going to be low in the fact that most folks that own a home are sitting on three to four percent mortgage and they still have to sell their house and then go out and look at something at, at six and a quarter. And so it just doesn't make sense from the financial standpoint of the Do home the math owner. yourself. Do the yeah. math. Yeah. Right. Now, so so let's play this out. So I think I think we're about to get this week in existing home sales. I think it's Thursday morning, below four million. It'll be a cycle low. Uh, I think we go lower. I think we go to probably three eight, three eight five, you know, maybe three seven five. So lower than the four point oh two. Uh, and for context, normalcy is six ish six, million. Six ish. Yeah. Yep. yeah, six. So we're we're down, you know, forty percent plus. Yep. I I don't see that going up meaningfully for four or five years. Because yeah. what people don't understand about housing is historically we have stayed in our houses for somewhere between six and eight years, depending on what charts you look at. Okay, interesting. But here, but here's the rub. What people don't tell you, the last 40 years, interest rates were like this. <laughs> yeah. So if you were going to move from a little house to a slightly bigger house, yeah. there was a chance your payment was the same. Same, same. Yep. Same, same. Bigger house, same payment. Sign me up. Oh, yeah, my loan term went from 24 years to 30. Who cares? I don't think that way. Same payment, I'm good. Now you go to a slightly bigger home and you could do the math yourself and your payment doubles. Yeah. Goes yeah. up 250%. Yeah. So I believe what we're going to see historically, and this will play out over years, is we're going to see people, you know, in their homes for 12, 14, 15 years on average. That's average. We're going to have some people that do the full 30 year payment. I'm out. Thank you for the gift, Fed presidents. I'm out. Yep. And um, so you're talking about transaction volume moving, not saying volume, turnover. Yeah. Going down by 50%. Low. Historic yeah. low. Historic yeah. low. It is. And again, if people took the time to look up and realize that we had something very similar in the 80s, it's in the data. It's just yeah. there. So, yeah. 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 Cool. And, 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 and from, because this is the thing that all home owners care about. What does that do? Just put a, a buoy under prices where yeah, they're prices are close to where we're at. I think I think um, you know I think housing moves relatively slowly. We got two years of adrenaline rush, yep. and now we're going to have eight years of sideways. Yep, we got it all. We yep. got all the all the decade of appreciation in two years, and it's basically done for for eight years. And I think one of the things that people have to understand is when you're thinking about real estate, there's a ton of real estate investing gurus out there. And I'm not referring to you by any stretch, by the mean, you, you are the, you are the guru, but you're the real guru. I'm talking about the fake gurus out there yep. that talk about all the success that they've had and the, you know, the formula that they utilize to, to, to foresee that that's not going to play out going forward. No, you're not going to no. see a 50% increase in home prices in your portfolio 
at any point in the near future here that made you look like an absolute genius when you weren't a genius. Some of you were, don't get me wrong. Some of you made great purchases, but some of you weren't geniuses and you made a lot of money. And if you continue the same practices moving forward, it's not going to work. Yeah, they're fine. I, I've now termed them financial engineers. Uh, yep, I think the fair. next, I, yeah, I think the next five years, financial engineers go bankrupt or go to jail, depending yep. on what they did. Uh, but good operators, they're going to do just fine. Because again, there's yep. always, you know, real estate's always hard, but there's always opportunity. So good operators who do the work, network, they'll find the deals, and you know, they'll come out of this just fine. So that's what I. That's I totally, what I think. Totally agree. Totally agree. Taylor, where can people find you? Yeah, find us at Life Goal Investments. We're on both Instagram and at TikTok. I appreciate you, Michael. You're the man. Thank you, buddy.